Hey guys, welcome back to the World's Worst Fishing. I'm Chris Jones. Got the bass boat behind me, just been cleaning it up a little bit. Actually had a great fishing trip this past weekend uh, with Simple Jack. If you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. It's the most recent video before this. Uh, we were absolutely just catching the heck out of the bass on, on a local lake here in Tallahassee. Um, mainly using a, uh, a wacky rigged five inch uh, stick worm. So uh, if you make stick worms at home, that's definitely a video you'll probably want to watch. Uh, we caught a lot of great fish and it was a lot of fun. However, today's video, we're unveiling a new mold, not just any new mold. We're unveiling a two piece aluminum hand pour swim bait. Um, there's not a lot of options out there in the market for these, you know. Um, there's, there's really only just a few and now there's another one. So let's go look at it and see what it can do. Okay, everybody, we are back out in the fish cave and we're gonna kind of do a fake unboxing because can't lie, totally already broke into these um, earlier in the day. But let's go ahead and slide one out anyway. Ooh, there's one. Come on. There's two. Let's see what else. I, di I didn't even open this. Oh, yeah. It's the new uh, hologram AI logos. Sweet. Okay. Let's take a look at the goodies here. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Here it is, guys. It doesn't have, like, a name name, but we're calling it the 6-inch open pour. So what we did is Josh and I at Angling AI, we've kind of been working on this under the radar for months now. Um, you know, there's, there's kind of been a hole in the market for this style of, of uh, mold. And, um, you know, I, I told him months ago, I said, you know, we ought to look into doing this and, uh, and, and, and see what we can come up with. Now, that was actually before I got my hands on this mold right here, which is kind of the OG of these this style mold the open pour uh, swim bait mold so there's that one right there this is also a six inch um, so anyway here is what we came up with all right well here's a better way to, to look at it there so automatically you can kind of see some similar dna so we we took kind of the dna and and profile shape of an already existing awesome swim bait, the Bloodline swim bait. You know, there, there's some similar scaling pattern, and um, let's see if I can, yeah. You know, there, there's some similar stuff going on there. Um, and then also kind of took a little bit from the hammer mold as well, uh, particularly, particularly in the tail section. So um, what we have here is a new six inch hand pour swim bait, okay? And, um, yeah, we, we're excited about it. We've only poured just a few of them between the two of us. Um, you know, Josh sent me the test mold of it last week. It, it didn't have the eye inserts yet, but we just kind of wanted to see what the bait looked like, what the action was going to look like, how it poured, etc. cetera. Um, and this is what we came up with. So let's, uh, let's take a little bit closer look and talk a little bit more about it and then we're gonna see what it can do. Okay, so as we take a closer look, um, I wanna point out just a few things that Josh and I discussed and kind of went back and forth on when developing this mold. One of which was the hook slot, okay? So the hook slot obviously is a very important function of a mold like this. And one of the things that, that I kind of made a point to, uh, to point out, <laughs> point to point out, was that the hook slot insert doesn't need to be too high because what will happen is as you're pouring the the bait let me see if i can yeah so as you're pouring the bait and let's say you want to pour three color laminate sorry i'm trying to keep this in focus if that hook slot is too high it's going to kind of split your your vein up it's going to kind of get in the way of where you want to pour so what we did is we made it low enough to where if you're pouring a three color uh, laminate, for example, you can kind of pour that first bottom color just past the top of that. And what that does is allow you room to then pour the, the next few layers without that hook slot being in your way. So another design feature 
um, kind of speaking to the poor ability was width from the top, okay? So what we did is we kind of kept the, the tapering to a minimum. You know, you, you can see the tail opening is massive here. If I contrast that over here, well, actually, let me just put that one kind of in, in the center. So if, if we just kind of look at overall tail size, you know, it, it's a lot harder to pour a small tail like that. We wanted to keep our tail open and not narrow it too much. That way you can pour it from the top and pour it all the way back just as easily um, instead of having to really narrow down. Um, now, now, obviously, you know, molds this size, it's still relatively easy to pour even when they get skinny like that. Um, but that was one of the things that we wanted to focus on was overall pourability and leaving the top largely open, primarily in the tail section, uh, I think just kind of assists with the overall ease of pouring. And uh, so this right here is actually the test mold. You can see it doesn't have the eye inserts. Um, and so just to point out a few differences, just to kind of speak to a little bit of the development process, you know, we, like I said, we went back and forth on, on a few things. If you look here, the hook slot goes up higher on the bottom. So look at the top of the hook slot insert to the top of that mold. And then the distance up here, you can see there's a larger distance between the slot and the top of the mold. So we actually lowered the slot on the final version. Also, this one, we actually had an indented lateral line where the two different styles of um, scaling meet. The idea was to, was to sort of have a bait that had a, a natural lateral line like a fish does. Um, what we found was that that actually made it look like you had a big fat cold crack between your layers. Um, so we did away with that and then we added some detail to the tail. The overall shape and, D and uh, DNA remained the same, um, but you know, just kind of pointing out, you know, this, this was a test mold. You can see it's made from four inch plate instead of two inch, um, you know, so we were kind of just getting, getting our thoughts together, getting some prototypes out, and uh, it was a really, really fun process. And I think we have a really, really awesome bait and an awesome mold from a bait maker standpoint. Okay, so enough chit chat. Let's see what this thing can do. We have some dead on plastic craw tube blend. So we're just gonna add a little bit of white pearl. We're just gonna make a solid color. Start with the basics. A Little bit of white pearl. Some blue highlight always goes well with, uh, with, with white pearl. Okay, so we're gonna add some blue highlight. And then we're gonna add some tiny silver flake. It's just gonna kind of be a big, bright, shiny, single color, shad color here. Just to kind of start with the basics and then we will really stretch the capabilities of this mold. We're gonna be pouring some, some layers and some skin pours, of course. All right, so now that we have our color mixed up, let's pour this in a solid color. See if we don't mess it up here. Looking good so far. Yeah, I like the way that tail's filling in. All right, and since I don't wanna to move to the other side of the camera, we'll bring this other one over here. Okay, new open pour aluminum swim bait mold. Gotta do a drum roll. Drum roll, please. Well, I'm a little sloppy on my stick tricks. All right, here we go. I haven't actually seen what this looks like yet uh, in the finished version of the mold, only the test mold. Oh yeah, look at that, y'all. Yes, sir. Beautiful. You can kind of still see the, the differentiation between the two types of scaling. It's no longer like an indented lateral line but the difference in the two kind of, you can see that little line there, which, which I like, but, but it doesn't, um, but it doesn't um, detract visually like it did before. And we have sized it to pretty much perfectly fit a 10 millimeter eye in the six inch version. Now I know what a lot of you might be wondering, well, is it gonna make a seven inch? 
Is it gonna make a five inch? You know, it, is, is six all we're gonna do? What I can say to that is, stay tuned till the end of the video because we're gonna talk about that and we want your guys' feedback on what sizes uh, you would like to see most. All right, now let's see how she looks using a uh, kind of a, a three color shad uh, laminate pour. So um, basically that sort of uh, style right there. But we're gonna make this really, really see-through. You know, one of the keys to pouring a, a natural looking bait is making it see-through. And you achieve that by using lots of pearls, um, but very, very small quantities of them. So that right there is just blue highlight. We're not adding anything else. So this right here is just going to be our bottom color. If I can get it stirred in without stirring up too many bubbles. Okay, so here we go. We're going to pour this bottom layer, okay? And we're only going to pour it till just over the uh, hook slot there. Again, we spaced that accordingly. I want to pour this super duper duper hot. Okay, so now we have our first layer in. You can see I stirred a little bit of bubbles into it. But those will settle out when the plastic is super hot like this. Those bubbles will rise to the top. And then if you really want to get particular about it, you can then heat gun them out. All right, so you can see that that hook slot is covered. That's very important because now whenever we pour that second layer on, it's not going to be in the way. Um, so... Yeah, didn't want to, didn't want that to be an oversight, and then people get kind of aggravated when they're trying to pour layers because hey, you know, there's a hook slot right in the way, and it's messing me up. Don't want that. So now we're gonna pour a purple vein, and we're gonna use some dead-on plastics, purple rain color. Again, we don't want a whole lot of colorant. You know, maybe maybe three drops here. All right. So let's see what that gives us. Bring this over here to where it's a little more in view. Yeah, perfect. Barely even there. Barely even there. All right. And one and, and, and again, just speaking to some of the advantages of having a two-piece aluminum pour is the, the heat options that you have. You know, you can set these on a griddle and keep them hot throughout the whole process to prevent cold cracking in order to maybe pour them more efficiently. You know, your, the layers aren't completely setting up. Um, you can blast them with a torch to preheat, or you can use a heat gun, right? To, um, to basically just blast those layers and reheat them up, you know, tack them back up. And you're not worried about burning your silicone or, um, you know, de degrading the silicone. I can literally absolutely just blast that layer and really get it set up to where I'm gonna get a good bond and I'm not worried about the integrity of the mold. You know, there's, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna break it. So now let's try and pour this layer here. Okay. Perfect. There you go. Okay, we have both sides very hot. So I'm gonna try to pour this around this camera here without goofing it up. Yep, gooped it up. Sorry guys, I need to maybe put the camera on the back side of the table for some of these tricky pours so that I don't do that. And this side should be a little better just because I'm a lot closer to it. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah, that one looks a lot better on the right, that's for sure. So if you've ever hand poured a large swim bait, you'll always see a dimple in the tail. Even a small hand poured swim bait dimples in the tail. How do we solve this? Heat gun, just like a lot of things, we can literally melt, I'm not sure if it'll focus, but it's gonna focus on the heat gun. Either way, you get the drift. You literally just heat it and it will melt that together and there you go no more dimple okay now let's see how these did 
Yeah, look at that, y'all. Beautiful. Makes a nice straight laminate line. Yeah. Let's get a couple angles right, make it look like a commercial. You know, where they always have the food spinning or the product spinning, all angles. <laughs> One thing I want to point out is um, is how Josh did the hook slot inserts. You'll see that there's these two little um, these these two little bumps there. These two little I don't I can't even think of the right term for them. Basically, it fits into those two circles. So what that allows you to do is a never put it in wrong to where maybe it's not quite all the way down. And whenever you're storing your molds, let's say you're picking them up and carrying them and they accidentally turn over, it's not going to fall out. Okay, and you guessed it, we're going to skin pour a color because you cannot have an aluminum open pour mold and not skin pour it. So we're going to add a few drops of a non-bleed red. We're kind of sort of going to go for a skin pour crawfish Rayburn red type color. I've never made this. I've never even tried to make it. Uh, I have no idea how, if at all, this is going to turn out, but we're going to find out. New mold, new color challenge. Only appropriate. So we're going to do four drops here of MF Rudfin red. It's a gorgeous non-bleed red. So we want our skin pour layer to be very thin. Mm, maybe not quite that thin. We're going to thicken it up a smidge. Maybe two more drops or so. All right. Because this red is going to be our skin pour layer. And we're going to add some black effect to it later. You know, those crawfish patterns. They're usually some sort of red and orange with some black uh you know markings down the sides so that's what we're going to attempt here so let's pick up one side here and skin pour it see what we can do yeah these skin pour really really well because the sides are relatively smooth and flat there's no major bumps in the sides, so to speak, to mess up uh, the flow of the plastic. So again, I'm gonna skin pour it. Okay, this one's gonna have a little less of the red, it looks like. All right. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm hoping I'm still liking it once, uh, once I'm done with these. <laughs> Never know. Skin pouring is uh, is certainly a gamble. It can be really incredible or really kind of not incredible, depending on how it goes for you. Alrighty. But I like the natural blend effect and sort of the randomness of the layers. That's what that's what makes it so cool to me. So. And there again, you can see how easy it is to manipulate the flow of the plastic here. There's no big bump anywhere or contour change to, to really mess up how you want that plastic to flow. So I think our layers right there are looking pretty decent. Okay, so now we're going to uh, pour, um, I guess, the body of the mold. I have like an orange sort of peppered belly, sort of a, another common crawfish color. So again, we're just gonna pour it about halfway up the mold, just a little bit past the hook slot. All right, right about there. And the same with this one over here. It's always a good idea to preheat the mold um, if those skins have set up. Kinda hit those with the heat gun and uh, tack those skins back up. It will just help um, everything bond together in a, in a good way. Um, there again, I don't know if this color is going to look good or not, um, crossing my fingers that it does. So what we're going to do is we're going to then top it off with more of that black charcoal color. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll take them out of the mold and then I'll add some black paint on the sides and we'll see if it looks good. Okay, we are ready to finish off this mold right here. Pour it 
pouring this incredibly hot. Okay, there we go. And now for the other side, we're gonna tack it up and then pour that one. And uh, then we'll meet you back when these are ready to come out of the molds. And real quick, don't wanna forget this step right here. Another advantage of these uh, aluminum molds is that I can really blast it with a torch here and really, really set those skins in and try to eliminate any cold cracks that may have happened during pouring. Um, so anyway, this is awesome. This, this is why you buy this type of mold. Okay, after torching, I uh, actually put the whole mold in the bath. You can kind of water cure your molds a little bit. Let's see how we did. Looks like the eye socket wants to hang up there for, for a second. Look at that, you guys. And then with a little bit of kind of black painted detail, you know, that's, that's not gonna look bad. Look how gorgeous that red is. Especially where the, uh, let me see if I can get, get a little better lighting. Especially kind of where you see the red interact with that black background on the skin. That's really, really lovely. No cold cracking down here in, in the layers. Really, really, I mean, those, those turned out about as good as I could have asked. There is the other one. So yeah, very cool. That is, is, is why you get a two-piece aluminum hand pour right there, among other things. All right, so now we're gonna get out some eyeballs here. So I have some of my 10 millimeter logo eyes and some, yeah, really pretty orange eyes there. I think I'm gonna put those on the crawfish bait. Um, so yeah, I think I've got what I need there. Um, we're gonna use some of those as well. So here's what we have. I went ahead and added my little uh, kind of crawfish patterny paint on the side. All right, I'm gonna put some eyes on then meet you right back. Okay, and there we go. There is the new six inch open pour. Um, so what I did is I, I actually clear dipped um, the, uh, the three, three color laminate shad pours just to see what it would look like. And I got to tell you, I like it. Um, I didn't pour those the best. Um, I did not have my layers hot enough and had some bubbles. So sorry about kind of doing the sloppy job on that one. Definitely need to get my layers a little hotter. Um, I'm going to pour some other stuff and uh, after the videos, after I'm done filming the video and just kind of see how things come out. I'm still learning how to pour it, um, but so far I am loving what I am seeing. Uh, so again, here's what we have. We have this solid pour right there with the, uh, come on, yep, with the logo eye. Solid shad. We have by far my favorite one. A little crawfish, sort of Rayburn Red style right there. Beautiful, beautiful skin pour. Um, that, I mean, this, boy, this thing skin pours well. And then, like I said, the um, clear dipped uh, laminate shad pours here. So, what do you guys think? And just real quick, just want to show you a few of the very first pours ever um, with this particular mold. Here's kind of a skin pour that I did, sort of a uh, perch. You can see the lack of eyes there. And then here's just some remelt. I, I did with a three color laminate. And one more thing I want to touch on, this is from the test mold. We made the nose super fat, super fat and super kind of blunt. Reason being, large swim bait hooks have large swim bait hook springs for the nose. We wanted a nose that could take the spring from a size 12 owner beast hook because that would be the absolute largest size you would use and take that spring like a beast, okay? Also, it's slotted, so, so it rigs well, okay? But there's lots of thick plastic up in that nose to maintain the integrity of the nose, and um, that was one thing that, that we wanted to make sure of. 
some other baits out there that kind of narrow a lot not really all that conducive to to these large hooks with large springs however this bait right here comes prepared okay guys well that is it that is the new mold i hope you guys really enjoyed now sizes what size would you like to see this mold in right now we have a six however we're definitely going to do a seven but we're considering also doing a five and then a size a little smaller than that maybe a four um some people like a 3.8 um so comment down below on what sizes you want to see this thing do you want to see a huge eight inch version a nine inch version do you want to see a seven <coughs> a five five and a half um, we definitely want to do seven and we definitely want to do something right around five. Um, but then we're also talking about, um, something small, you know, for, um, for walleye fishermen, for fishing up North, for fishing on the back of an umbrella rig for a jig trailer. Um, we want that small size as well. Um, you know, you, you, you also got, have to take into consideration. It's a hand pour mold. The smaller you get, the tighter the spaces are, it's going to be harder to pour. Would you be better off with injection at three and a half inches? You know, those are all things to keep uh, in consideration. But um, yeah, I'm super duper excited. Um, I think this thing is gonna be an absolute winner. Can't wait to see what some other guys come up with with this mold. Um, like I said, that was my first time ever pouring um, the actual version of it. You know, I had the test mold only for about four, three or four days. Um, so with all of this out of the way, now let's look at what it looks like in the water. I was able to get some footage yesterday um, using one of the uh, prototypes. There again, the only difference is that one didn't have eyes and the little indented lateral line was taken out. Um, the action on the bait is unbelievable. Um, I got the best footage I could in low light conditions. Let's go ahead and look at how it swims. Shoot me lots of comments down below and thank you guys so much for watching.